is AM Agenda with Kieran Gilbert. Hello and welcome to the program. One of Tony Abbott's team, Liberal MP Sharman Stone, is not backing away from her suggestion that the Prime Minister has lied in his reasoning for rejecting the SPC Ardmona bid for $25 million in government assistance. She made the claim yesterday and was asked about it again this morning on the Nine Networks Today show. Well, maybe yes, indeed, misinformation. Um, yes, I don't resolve from a second for saying that the information the PM gave at the, at the press conference following the Cabinet decision was not true. The things that were stated were not true. And not true equals could be called a lie, absolutely. <laughs> With me on the program this morning, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister, Josh Frydenberg. Coming up a bit later, Ed Husick, the Parliamentary Secretary, the Shadow Treasurer. First, though, Josh Frydenberg, to you. Your reaction to Sharman Stone's comments again this morning, uh, your fellow Victorian Liberal MP. Well, look, Sharman is a valued member of the party room and is clearly very passionate, as she should be, on behalf of her constituents about this issue. But she's dead wrong about those accusations. She's laying at the feet of um, the Prime Minister and other ministers. Um, look, SBC Ardmona's parent company, Coca-Cola Amatil, uh, is a $9 billion company. It turned a $215 million profit in the last six months. Um, it needs to continue to invest in that business. Um, we do not resolve from the fact that we believe the, uh, the wages were higher than the standard in that business. But if you think about the principle, for the long-term health of the Australian economy, companies need to stand on their own two feet. We can't have governments keep providing handouts. I mean, the Labor Party has a 10-year to business. Their default position, Kieran, is just to provide a handout as opposed well, to a if hand that's up. The case, if that's the case, what about this grant... Three and a half million dollars announced uh, in the last day or so as well to a Tasmanian seafood uh, processor, Hue and Aquaculture. So there's this grant on the one hand, three and a half million to this uh, aquaculture company. How would the people in Goulburn Valley feel when there's 25 million dollars for a, a, a bigger, some would say, more pivotal processing centre there for the, uh, the fruit processors and others? Well, I actually don't know the nature of that particular grant you're referring to, but in terms of a handout to provide um, a lifeline to SBC or Mona, um, you, know, you just have to be careful that these um, subsidies are not continually provided um, to the detriment uh, of you know, the health of the Australian economy more broadly because there are lots of companies out there that are doing it tough and understandably so. And do we want every company to putting a hand out to, to government? And it's a very dangerous position or precedent to set to go down that path. But I suppose you know, the, it's about the point consistency, we, at, 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 The point yeah. is, it's consistency because Sharman Stone points out the $16 million to Cadbury. Then you've got this $3.5 million that I referred to here uh, announced by the government the last day or so mm. to Hugh and aquaculture. I, I guess the, the reason why the, food, the uh, fruit processing industry in the Goulburn Valley and the, the, the fruit producers would be a bit aggrieved is that there just seems to be a lack of consistency. Well that's not right because you've had uh, companies like Holden putting their hand out for more money and obviously uh, we're familiar with um, some of Qantas's claims. Um, and so the government is taking a principled and a consistent position here is we want companies to survive and to prosper but if it's the taxpayer who is always going to be left to provide a handout then that's not going to be in the best interest either of those companies in the long term or the health of the Australian economy. We want more jobs to be created. We want companies to stand on their own two feet. We want the food processing um, sector to be vibrant, to be very much a part of the Australian economy going forward. Um, but management is need to drive, to needs to drive that agenda to build greater productivity. And some of the changes that we are proposing to introduce, Kieran, like getting rid of the carbon tax, like reintroducing the Australian Building and Construction Commission, um, like cutting the company tax rate, and all those sort of changes that we're introducing, cutting red tape, of course, um, that's going to stimulate productivity, growth, and create thousands it's, of new jobs in yeah, the Australian sure, economy. But this, That's this, the way this forward. Is not, 
It's not a great look, though, when you've got one of your fellow Liberal MPs, a former minister herself, Sharman Stone. Again, I say, you know, this morning she's been tweeting a number of tweets in the last hour or so, saying SPC's uh, media statement shows the claims that its awards and conditions are not a, at all described at the Prime Minister's press conference. Uh, again, saying that's a must-read, rejecting the government's argument, as we heard in that statement as well at the start of the program. When you've got one of your own Liberal MPs saying that the Prime Prime Minister is lying, that is a bad, bad look. Well, of course, the Prime Minister is not, uh, you know, lying as Sharman Stone um, has said. But the point is, the, uh, the, the government takes a principled, consistent position on this issue in terms of what's going to create the most amount of jobs and what's going to be on, in the best interest of the taxpayer and in the health of the Australian economy going forward. I completely understand Sharman's passion about this issue, um, her strong advocacy on behalf of her constituency, uh, and she is a valued uh, member of the party room. But um, in this issue, on this issue, the Cabinet's made a decision, and, uh, and that is it. The, uh, the Treasurer has indicated that the Commission of Audit will be released earlier than the May budget to uh, enable a, an informed debate. Is that it? Do you welcome that call to, I suppose, explain, lay the groundwork for the cuts that will be coming in Mr Hockey's first budget? Oh, absolutely, uh, Kieran. Well, firstly, Labor bequeathed us a fiscal disaster. I mean, $667 billion of debt um, going forward, an extra 200,000 unemployed. We're going to have to take some very hard decisions that they squibbed when they were in government. Um, and the fact is, this Commission of Audit has put um, business at the front and centre of decision making because we understand it's business, not government, that creates long term jobs. We'll wait for the, uh, the, uh, the Commission of Audit report and then we'll consider it in light of the upcoming May budget. But if you look back at the Henry Tax Review, do you remember Wayne Swan just sat on that for months and months and months? And uh, that created a lot of uncertainty and it meant that a lot of you know, good opportunities for reform went missing. So we don't want to make that same mistake and I think that's what Joe Hockey's been alluding to in the well, are you, are you, today. Are you, alluding, are you alluding to the fact that you don't want to take people by surprise with these cuts? as the government, the former government, did with the mining tax, that you need, you recognise that you need to take the electorate with you on that? I absolutely care and I fully acknowledge that you do need to take the electorate with you, particularly when there is, you know, some tough medicine to take. And uh, we uh, have not created this fiscal mess. Labor created this fiscal mess. They didn't have any responsibility around major economic decision making. They didn't have a consistent narrative uh, and we are left to clean it up. And if we're going to create the thousands, indeed hundreds of thousands of jobs that we're committed to doing, uh, we are going okay. to need to get the, uh, the budget back into balance. On the government's submission to the Fair Work Commission, uh, mm. the, it, it included, um, you know, calling on the Commission to take into consideration the softening economy and labour costs uh, in generally. D is this code for the government wanting to cut penalty rates, as the union movement and others <laughs> are saying this morning? This is another nice scare campaign from a very desperate union movement that would like to deflect attention from its own woes. Uh, indeed, the thuggery intimidation um, that we have seen in the building and construction sector in particular. Look, Labor instigated this Fair Work Commission review into 122 modern awards. Uh, it's right that the government is making a submission. Our issue is that we need less complexity, um, less confusion around these awards. We need to take into account um, the cost to business and also the inflationary impacts because we want to create lots of new jobs. We don't want to pr price labour out of the market, so to speak. And, you know, if we are going to get a situation where people can take risks as entrepreneurs, can employ new people, then we need to have a, mark a, a, a wages uh, market that is balanced, um, that is not um, uh, down one end of the, uh, the pendulum, so to speak. So we, we need balance in our wages structure and the government is right to put a review, uh, to put a submission to the review that looks at reducing the complexity and the confusion that we currently hear about in the modern awards. A, a, couple, a couple of other issues. You campaigned with Bill Glasson in Brisbane on Monday uh, for the yeah. ahead of the Griffith by-election this weekend. 
Internal Labor polling uh, leaked to the Financial Review today suggests Bill Glaston's got a very strong personal popularity, 59% positive rating there, according to this polling. Are you quietly confident he might, uh, he might uh, win that seat for the LNP this coming Saturday? I really hope so. Bill Glasson is a fantastic candidate, you know, the former head of the um, AMA, a small business owner, somebody who lives with his family in the local electorate. And I can tell you, Kieran, as we did a street walk um, to the florist, you know, to the bookshop owner um, down the street, um, the people really uh, warmed to him. They knew him, obviously, from his previous campaigns, and they had a lot of confidence in his ability to deliver for the people of Griffith. So I'm very hopeful that he will be successful. History obviously tells us it's difficult for incumbent governments to win by-elections of this kind, but we, we couldn't have a better candidate than Bill Glass. OK. On to uh, a pre-selection issue within your area in Melbourne. This is, um, relates to a State Minister, Mary Waldridge. Now, you've been accused of, of not backing her in this seat of Q in Melbourne. Now, why are you not supporting the Premier's pick here? Well, we have uh, a contested uh, contest there with two very good candidates uh, in Mary Woolridge and Tim Smith, and indeed both are good friends of mine. But the thing about the Liberal Party is it's uh, their grassroots pre-selections and that the local members will decide that. And uh, as a federal member, getting involved in state pre-selections is, is uh, you know, not the common thing to do. So we'll let uh, the, uh, the local members decide. But, you know, Mary is a very senior member of uh, Dennis Napthine's government um, and, you know, he's a very, uh, very well-respected person. Um, Tim Smith is a but former she's going to be um, without mayor a seat in the area shortly. and he's also well-respected. She's going to be without a seat shortly. Why did the Premier not give her the seat of Boleyn, uh, for example, which, was, which, was, uh, which is a safe seat and handed to another minister, Matthew Guy? Why did uh, Dennis Napthine do that in your view? Oh, look, uh, that's a question that you'd have to direct to the Premier. Uh, I'm not going to speculate on these matters. Like I said, the Liberal Party, uh, Kieran, will allow um, the local membership to decide these pre-selections, as it should be, unlike the Labor and Party, you, you, which tries to, to be one way top down. Or the other? Oh, not so I'm, to not, uh, no, I'm not backing one candidate over the, uh, over the other. Not even privately? <laughs> not even privately. OK, Josh Frydenberg, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks very much. A quick break on AIM Agenda when we return. Labor frontbencher Ed Husick.